would be, I think I'd certainly recommend rainwater harvesting in that area as well. Yeah, because the other water is treated. We have another call on the line. Thanks for holding, caller. Please go ahead. Yes, hello. My name is Lindbergh. Good night, gentlemen. Good, Good night. night. I have a question. How much of Wasco's water is wasted between the plant and the consumer? I mean, how much you build and how much you pump? Right. The, the question here is not about wastage. It's a matter of what you can account for. Um, between the production of water and the time we actually get a revenue from it, there are a number of things that can reduce what we get revenue from. Um, one of them is leaks in our pipes. Um, one is theft of water. One, I think, another customer, had ref another caller referred to earlier was maybe wrong metering, um, reading meters incorrectly, that kind of stuff. Our last estimate of that suggests that we cannot really account for almost 50% of the production. Um, we have actually embarked on what we call a non-revenue water program, and the intention is to reduce this to an acceptable level. Just to put it in perspective, industrialized countries um, who have all of the best assets, <coughs> the, the rate of non-revenue water is normally about 20%. So we have a target over the next five years to actually reduce our non-revenue number by at least half. That would require a fair amount of investment as well, both in terms of replacement of pipes, um, information systems, metering. There's a, f there's a very extensive program to, to achieve that target. All right. Do you have another question, Gola? Yes. A few years ago, mm -hmm. a gentleman came to my workshop, and he carried one of your shut-off valves, the one that you use to lock off customers that, is, that does not pay their water. Mm -hmm. Uh, he wanted me to drill a hole through the ball valve so that the valve will appear to be closed, but water will still be going into the consumer's premises. Mm -hmm. uh, he came back twice, and I called up the management at Wasco. Actually, the, it was a female manager at the time, and I reported it. I gave the number of his vehicle and a few other details. I was never called back. I mean, that would have been courteous for, for Vasco to call me back, but I was never called back. But this thing raises a few questions. I mean, he must have an input from somebody at Wasco to know who has been disconnected so he can apply his illegal trade. Now, when I went to see his car, he had a bunch of valves, probably 10 to 15 brand new valves in the trunk of his car, which means he not only have a connection in the office, getting to know who's been disconnected. He also have a connection in the storage area where he can get materials from Vasco to help to steal water from Vasco. Uh, I was never called back on this thing, but I have a strong feeling that some of your water losses might be attributable to this cooperation between employees at Vasco and unscrupulous characters. Mm -hmm. I would, I would all, make all these things. All these things are very, very possible. Yeah, I will make a suggestion that you go through your computer records and see who was disconnected and did not ask for reconnection. And well, that has been that has been done fairly routinely. However, it's a fairly large number. Yes, I, I would assume so. From mm -hmm. the number of valves he had in the back of his trunk, <laughs> it's a big business going on. Well, I think we should certainly have another conversation in a different forum. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, at that sort, I'll bring that up because it must have something to do with your 50% water loss. Mm -hmm. all, all, right. all of that adds up. Okay. Good night. Great. Thanks, Thanks a lot, a lot. Uh, Carl. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, th that raises a, a very interesting point as well, and it's something you have re um, talked about earlier on, the non-revenue water. Wasco is uh, currently at around 50% based on the reports that have been given. That means that Wasco is producing the water, but just cannot account for all for of it for yes. all of that water. Can I make one point? Um, Kola, can you just hold for us one second as we take this point from uh, from Kelly? If you notice in in the summary of decision of the proposed tariff, that's one of the things that actually the the, the, the commission recommend of Wasco mm -hmm. to tell us how they're going to reduce the non-active uh, client because we recognize there must be something because if you do it on average, you're talking about three point eight million dollars annually. Mm -hmm. If you do an average of fourteen seventy, and so and how many customers <coughs> do you have who are not who are not active? 
who have accounts but who are not active, who have not I been paid for. I don't know my head, but we have 45 active customers. 45,000 active customers. But, but there are lots and lots of other <coughs> customers that have been there for quite some time, but mm -hmm. um, we need to review. Okay. Good evening, caller. Thanks a lot for holding. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah. How good are evening. you? Very good. Um, I would like to know, how do I get charged for what for water sewage system? The, the current approach to charging for wastewater services is based <coughs> on the volume of water used. So if you use 4,000 gallons of water, the wastewater charge is based on that same 4,000 gallons. So the rate is applied to 4,000 gallons for the sewer rate. Mm -hmm. So the, you have a water rate and a sewer rate being applied to the volume. Mm, okay. I, I, hope, I hope you got that information clear, I'll call that. Yeah, one another area of the non-revenue is also what is used for firefighting. That's not metered either. Ah, right. So that's a fairly significant amount in some occasions. Mm -hmm. Good evening, caller. Please go ahead. Yes, um, I, I want uh, um, Mr. Joseph to repeat this. How is the sewage um, um, a, a charge right. um, determined? At, and I want to comment on this again. So after he responds, I will I will comment. And did you hear his response the first time? Yes, I didn't understand. He said it's based on the amount of water that you use. Mm -hmm. if, if, I, if I use 4,000 gallons of water for the month, right. my water rate, which at, at, up to now is $7.35 a gal uh, thousand gallon, right. plus 15 for any thousand gallons above the first 3,000, that's calculated as my water bill, right? Yeah, but I may consume some of Into that water, so I am not necessarily disposing of that water through sewage. Okay, well, the, what has happened here is that the, the, water, the water rate and the, and the sewer rate are not at the same level. I know, I can see it on the my bill. One is, is five is, is currently, is a five forty-five per thousand, uh, and one is seven thirty-five right. per thousand. It's a right. percentage of the water rate. So rather, th rather than <coughs> metering your, your sewer or your outflow, what has happened is, there is a percentage applied. So okay, the Mr. rate actually reflects a percentage of the okay. water rate. But Mr. Joseph, um, I, I don't know whether that is balanced or fair. And I am more concerned that depending on where you live, for example, how are the hotels and other institutions up north charged relative to a domestic consumer? They, they have different rates. Um, the hotels pay... Are the rates higher? They yes, yes, they do they pay are. commercial rates. Um, the hotels even pay a higher rate than the commercial rates. <coughs> At the moment, for the existing rates, hotels pay twenty-two dollars per thousand gallons, yeah, <coughs> and they pay on the wastewater side um, fourteen dollars and sixty cents for wastewater. So you're saying the wastewater will go up by five, ten, twelve, approximately up to about thirteen dollars. It's currently five forty-five. <coughs> it's five forty-five. It goes to thirteen ten. And that's based on... on anyway. That is the award that's 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 that has been given. Okay. I also want to comment on... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm listening to you, Mr. Joseph, and with due respects to you, I'm a little concerned about the operation itself, the quality of staff, the efficiency with which your staff <coughs> operate to ensure that you, you maximize the... the, the assets of the company. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't, while I do appreciate the need to increase these, these um, um, fees, I am deeply concerned that there is a need to look at your organization itself and restructure and assess some of the people who are on the ground working. For example, the gentleman <coughs> talked about this issue with, with the person making some adjustment to the meter or whatever. I am saying there is a need to have more on the ground um, efficiency in your operations to ensure that these things do not happen. I, I, I look at the operation and I'm very concerned that we are paying more money while the consumer does not have a problem with um, contributing to an increase. I also want to see an improvement in the operation of the company. Thank I, you. I think that the point is, is well taken and is accurate. Um, at the moment, we have actually initiated an organizational review, which we are intending to implement. 
We've also introduced certification of our operators and staff where they, they actually are supposed to meet the requirements of international certification, and that is going to be instituted as, as mandatory. And um, we've also been doing a fair amount of training at both the management and the, 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 the lower level staff as well in an attempt to move in that direction. But certainly, we must improve in terms of what you have just said, and um, that has been, uh, has been initiated. <coughs> Going back to my initial point is that we have to be accountable to the Commission to show them going forward what we have been doing to improve in all areas and staffing and efficiency gains are also part of that. All right, thank you very much. Um, final words, the time has gone by so quickly. Um, ju just to wrap up, what is the next move for the Commission and also for WASCO as we go through this process? Okay, the next move is that we're waiting for written presentation once we, we have the written presentation, we're going to analyze and we would revisit the writ and make a final decision. Uh, so we are hoping that within short, we can make a, a final decision on, on, on the new tariff. Okay. I mean, from our perspective, I think the, the <coughs> challenge now is to arrive at, again, as Lydia has been referring to, the improvements that are to be made within a specified time frame mm -hmm. and um, have that approved by, by the Commission and to be held accountable for achieving these targets mm -hmm. over time. And, and the time frame that you're looking at, uh, that you have proposed to the Commission is how, how um, I think the, the Commission's award refers to a three-year three -year, um, time frame, so mm -hmm. we have to develop um, indicators and, and, and performance benchmarks for a three-year period that we need to meet. Okay, wonderful. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for being part of the program in the hot seat. <laughs> you know, so many calls um, on, on water because so many people are interested in knowing what's going on with the water company <coughs> and how the proposed increases will affect them. Mr. Kelly Joseph, the Executive Director of the National Water and Sewage Commission, and Mr. John Joseph, the Managing Director of the Water and Sewage Company. Just before we go, one program note tomorrow on the Law Factor Live. Do you know when it is healthy to eat an animal you have not purchased from a monitored establishment? Are you aware of the health risks to human beings if animals are not properly cared for? Dilly and her guests discuss animals and the way they're treated in St. Lucia. When it comes to dogs especially, we have a horrible reputation where jokes are made on how animals are victimized. The guests are Dr. George Joseph, Chief Veterinarian, and Mr. Michael Bob, Chief Forestry Officer. DFL tomorrow, right here, live, 8.30 p.m. So don't miss that program on animals. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Clinton Reynolds. I want to thank you for being part of the program. I want to thank our guests, those of you who called in. Thank you very much for making Newsmaker Live, what it was. Join me again next week at the same time. But before that, I'll be here on the weekend for the Press Club. See you then. God willing. <laughs>